Oh, uh, here too. This is Charles the Destroyer. This is part two of the Age of Artistic Vandalism by Nux. Um, I have my emotional support white slices of white bread now um, because I and some chips as my snack. So grab snackies, grab a bevy. Let me know what you eat and I'm drinking down below. Let me know how you feel about the things that we're talking about. It's giving me emotions. That's why I needed my emotional support white bread. I'm having emotions. I'm having feelings. Which, I mean, I guess is the whole point of, like, reacting to content, but, like, oh, my God. All right, here we go. Let's get to watching. Localization is a word that sends shivers down my spine in the year of our Lord, 2024. The idea that somehow you have this existing piece of media in Japan, but you want uh -huh. to appreciate it and respect and love this art in another country as well. Unfortunately, okay. I don't speak Japanese, and I want to enjoy my weeaboo shit. I want to enjoy some- Okay, okay. So, my sister contacted me like two weeks ago and was like asking for anime recommendations because she has started getting into anime, which is very surprising to me, but like awesome. I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. So I was going through, and I was like, what can I suggest to her that is a good, like, starting out, like, kind of anime that is within the themes and genres that she likes that is not like, hey, you need to kind of know about Japanese culture to understand some of this, right? Because, like, there's some stuff that is like, you're not going to get this if you don't, if you have zero understanding of Japanese culture, you're just going to be confused, so like you gotta you gotta kind of ease them in, right? So that is a thing. Like localization is kind of a thing. I don't know. I'm kind of like maybe start with stuff that doesn't need to be heavily localized. Personally, I have feelings about localization. I just. All right. Some nice anime cringe now and again. And unfortunately, that means it's gotta be either translated to English or dubbed into English. And either one of those two is totally fine by me so I could consume this media that I genuinely love so much. Now, it needs to get localized to some degree. There are expressions that are gonna Hi, exist Rebel, in anime that quite frankly are not gonna make sense and I'm not gonna have any idea what's talking about. For example, in English, you have an sen a sentence, who screwed the pooch? Now, this is an expression that means who f***ed up. Pretty basic expression. However, yeah. if you were to translate this one-to-one -one translation to Japan, it would be who had sex with the dog. Now, honestly, that doesn't make sense at all. And you'll hear that. You'll be like, nani? That, that, <laughs> that doesn't fit nothing. So localization would be taking an expression like who screwed the pooch and translating into a Japanese either expression or translation that yeah. actually makes sense. Who? Uh, that's what you want localization to be, right? Like, was it... Um colloquialism I can't say that word anyway like like general phrases or whatever like kind of slang doesn't always translate right so you need to translate it and localize it for the new audience right that makes sense is that all they do though stop <laughs> Literally the most easy to understand concept in the history of time. This is what Correct. localization is supposed to be. Yep. Now, there are many problems when it comes to bad localization, and I am not going to mention every single bad localization in the history of anime ever, because then we- Are you gonna talk about Dragon Ball Maid Sama? Because Luko is behind we'll you. Be watching the entire Crunchyroll collection together for this video, and none of us have time or patience for that. Needless to say, this video- Colloquialism. Yeah. It was not sponsored by Crunchyroll. Now, some would argue bad dubs are artistic vandalism. And in my opinion, that's not fair. They're trying their best, let's say. And unfortunately, the dub doesn't come out as good or emotional or ho however you like it, like the sub. And unfortunately, that's just, it is what it is. I don't think that's malicious vandalism. I think that falls more under the either incompetence or level of niche appreciation for the culture. We ain't talking about that today. Honestly, another massive thing that they like doing is whitewashing the actual culture out of Japanese cartoons and stuff in order for the sake of just giving it to modern audiences and giving it to your appreciative Western viewers like the slop that you know they enjoy. Anytime anything remotely religious and Japan-y happens, well, we want, we, want to, we want to whitewash that shit out of that. We want to freaking blast that. We, we don't want it to see anything <laughs> that, that doesn't suit our culture. And 
Mm, Krispy Kreme making those rice donuts. That, I think, is done purely for sales purposes. It's not for some agenda. I think it's laziness. And uh, to be honest, I think it is a travesty. I don't think it's acceptable in any way to start deculturing a piece of media without permission of the original artist just for the sake of selling it easier to people and giving people slop because you don't think that that's how people would appreciate it more. First of all, how dare you? Second of all, you don't, you're not allowed to do this. This is illegal. Now, there are a lot of honorifics at the end of Japanese words. Chan, san, Sama, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, that does not necessarily translate well into an English dub. To remove that, I completely understand. That is a language thing. Now, yeah. to be fair, I think the fault Agreed. of this definitely does fall on people like Crunchyroll that are hiring people with very low qualifications, paying them basically nothing in order to translate shit, always threatening that they're just going to get some sort of AI to translate stuff instead so that they don't even need these people that they're hiring. Uh, uh. I'm not blaming translators as much as I'm blaming the lazy, lazy heavy-handedness of the industry itself. But again, yep. my major qualm here is not even necessarily when it comes to this. And when it comes to malicious... Translators are important. Pay them. So they can do a good job. Thank you. This changing of media because you think the message is unhealthy for your viewers. And while I think localization in general is a massive topic that could be discussed at massive length at some other time, yeah, this probably. topic is not that. This topic is artistic vandalism. Yep. It's objective, malicious vandalism and okay. holy shit you are about to lose your mind so i'm gonna go rapid fire right now okay i'm gonna give you a bunch of examples of obvious artistic vandalism and then i'm going to deep dive into one specific case because i'm not mm -hmm. here to watch every crunchyroll anime with you ever Saint Seiya is one of the most popular anime of all time. It is a massive franchise. It's mostly for kids. If you haven't seen it or heard of it, that's probably why. But it's mega, mega huge and everywhere. It got a 3D adaptation on Netflix. And guess what they did? The they got a 3D animation on Netflix. I know that. The character Shun, you know, like the, the femboy guy, the effeminate male dude, the guy that... The is he going to be a girl? Are they gonna Sailor Moon this? Does not look like your typical buff masculine male stereotype guy. That dude that is definitely defying your gender norm in every way, being an active form of representation. Well, they just turned him into a girl for this show because he can't just have a cast of male characters. You have to have men and women fighting side by side. And they literally just gender swapped him for the sake of inclusivity, baby. There are so many examples of Shun basically sacrificing himself, hugging people in freezing weather to warm them up and stuff, purely for the sake of being a male bonding bro moment where this dude was doing something amazing. I don't know if you want to inter interpret it as some sort of homoerotic thing or not. Again, not my point. Art is for you to decide what it's like. That's the beauty of art because... Listen, I love it when they get, give something for the shippy girlies, okay? I love. I'm a shippy girly. I love shipping. So I love it when they're like, here's some crumbs or here's here's a little thing you can think about. Like, I'm ha super happy about it. Like, I'm like, hell yeah. Look at that. Look at that pandering. Hell yeah. What's up? Pander to me. But like, what do you mean they made him into a girl? Why? So they basically, like, they did the same fucking thing with Sailor Moon back in the day. Was it Deke? Did the same fucking thing. What was it? Zoysite? Zoysite was a dude. They turned Zoysite into a woman because Zoysite was too effeminate for them. Same thing with like Sailor, Neptune, and Uranus. Oh, they're cousins. That's an incestuous relationship now. Is that worse than lesbianism? I just, uh, I think it is, personally. Um, But like, you know, whatever. I mean, I guess they're cool with that for whatever reason. And then like, you, the, I feel like the reason that they never touched Sailor Stars was because Sailor Stars, they change gender when they transform. They're guys that turn into girls and they just didn't want to touch that because they were like, I don't fucking know how to deal with this. Like, okay. Because it can be interpreted in many ways. Well, you can't interpret this in many ways if they change the art. They had to freaking cut the scene because, bro, it's a kid's show. You can't have a man and a whim a women sitting there naked cuddling for warmth and stuff. No, 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 no. Let's just cut a massive character moment out of the show because we had to make this dude a women because you, you have to have men and women fighting side by side because, bro. <laughs> it's so obviously for the sake of points that there's a, there's a, fa a female women over there. A, a whole ass female women. Like, why did you do that? It was for laziness and point gaining. It wasn't for any form of story storytelling or anything it's honestly just performative and embarrassing 
Another thing that they like doing is they like inserting and shoehorning modern Zoomer lingo into their anime. My favorite oh, no. thing is when Naruto looked. Oh no. Because I don't know any of it. Oh no. Looked at Sasuke and said, That wasn't very skibbity toilet Ohio Riz of you. And, and then they proceeded to look smax each other for a solid 10 seconds. Bef then they proceeded to what now? What are we saying? Please, I'm old. Please, please. I need subtitles. I need, <laughs> I need like that subtitle, like, you know, in that death note thing that's like, all according to Keikaku. And then there's like a translator note that's like, Keikaku means plan. I need that. I need it, please. For telling each other that they were a little bit sus among us. Now, there are a billion sus screenshots that my editor could put on screen literally right now to tell you exactly what I'm saying. I think the most obvious one is the Nagatoro one. There's this anime Nagatoro about this girl that's bullying this dude. And she says, well, that's sus. And honestly, you could just say, okay, they were trying to make it goofy and give it flavor because she's a high school girl. They made her say sus. Us. Obviously, sus is not a word that you that, that you say in Japan. Like, what the f are you doing? But okay, we can live with it. And then you have the head ass idiot translator on Twitter going on to Twitter to talk about how. Oh yeah, I love doing this. Just I kind of think it's great translation since the original script, also slang and shortened. That is acting suspiciously. So this and acting suspiciously, acting sus would be a perfect match. However to annoy people with my translations. Suddenly, people that are translating things feel like they have what? some sort of power. The power to dictate what this art should look like, even though you are nothing but a mouthpiece for the original artist. How dare you sully the chips are coming out. Their work with your creativity to piss off people that you feel like you have the right to piss off. You are nothing. Sorry if I got a little bit, a little bit edgy there, but that's how I feel. I think another one of the most floated around examples of this comes from the Dragon Maid anime. Dragon Maid is the show, cute show. I've heard about this one. I've heard about this discourse. If it is what I think it is. Because, you know, I'm part of the anime community and so that blew up. Oh, we all love it. It's about a couple of dragon girls. They come to the freaking human world and they become girls. They become cute waifus instead of dragons. You got, you got them in all shapes and sizes. Literally, it's terrifying what the internet will do to some of them. And well, editor, roll the clip. <laughs> what are you wearing that for? Oh, those pesky patriarchal societal demands were getting on my nerves. So I changed clothes. Give it a week, they'll be begging you to change back. Huh? I do love how Toru asked... Hi, Tano. How's it going? Welcome. My soul's leaving my body slowly. So, like... Japan has a very different culture. It has a very different culture than we do, okay? Like, I keep getting TikToks. So, like, I get um, traveling Japan TikToks because I go to Japan, right? Like, every few years, I go to Japan for, like, a few weeks, and I have fun. It's my vacation. Um... And there's like all these like, this is what you shouldn't shouldn't do in traveling Japan. They're like, make sure you don't do these faux pas. Like, don't wear anything super revealing. Don't wear like leggings. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. And people are like, other people that live in Japan are like, Japanese people don't care if you're a tourist and you're doing these things. Like, they don't really care. Like, worst case, they'll be like a little annoyed, but they're just gonna be like, it's a fucking tourist, whatever. Um, but like. You, need, you do need to understand they have a different culture. They have different societal norms. And yeah, I'm not saying they don't have problems. Every, every single country has problems within their society. It's, that's just being a society. There's going to be problems. But I don't know, like... This just seems, I don't think tone deaf is the word, but this just seems kind of gross, personally. Like, I don't, I, 
I don't know. What's with that outfit? And the response in the original Japanese was, well, everyone was always saying something to me, so I tried toning down the exposure. How is it? Pr toning down the exposure, meaning, sorry, I'm eating a chip because I'm mad. <laughs> meaning, people were saying something to me and I'm trying to be respectful of the society in which we are currently in. It's kind of how I'm kind of reading this because like, Everyone was saying something to me, so I tried toning it down. How is it? Okay, right? Like, hey, I'm not fitting in the way they want me to. They've been saying things to me, so I'm fixing it. Ish. Uh, Pretty wrong? awesome. Pretty great, right? Well, in the Funimation dub, it's, oh, those pesky patriarchal society demands getting on my nerves, so I changed clothes. Within the original sub, Toru responding with, you should try changing your body next. And in the Funimation dub, because, you know, she's a dragon, she can freaking transform. And then in the Funimation dub, the response is, give it a week, they'll be begging you to change back. Oh, the, that patriarchy, am I right, guys? Yeah, because a couple of dragon girls from an alternate dimension where these the, they're these overpowered deities that have come to Earth to kind of just have a good time every once in a while yeah they the, the patriarchy was really getting on their nerves am i right guys now i want to make it clear the reason why i'm upset about this stuff isn't because it objectively makes these shows worse i would have the same issue if it would even make the shows better because the thing is i don't think you as a translator or localizer or whatever the f has any right whatsoever to crap on a piece of art written by someone else. You are not being paid as an editor to fix their script. You are being paid as a localizer to let their art and their beautiful work that they put into the world reach more people. That's your job. You are not some gift from God that is here purely to divulge and spread your freaking ideology onto the masses, whether you are a good person or not. Every time localizers get confronted with this sort of thing, you have the most insane reaction from all of them. Watching Asmongold react to these morons backtrack and talk about why they actually are correct and because white people are actually a blight on society, which is why they have the right to to ruin this piece of art created by an Asian man for the sake of what? Spreading your agenda? How dare you? Well, uh, I'm kind of scared to ask this question now because I don't want to bring them in the room. Um, uh -oh, so okay. this is uh -oh. directed at Jamie, but all of you can answer. Go, Jamie, all of you go. I'm excited like, about uh -oh. it. Like, so I'm Funimation Jamie. has come under, let's call it Original subs, okay. Criticism oh, for criticism. how they choose to adapt their scripts oh, for like a couple of shows. Hate. Yeah, got it. Yeah, um... Jesus Christ. What do you mean they've come up? So he's like, Funimation has come under criticism for how they adapt this. And she goes, oh yeah, they've come under unnecessary hate. Got it. Criticism isn't necessarily unnecessary hate. I'm just going to say it's criticism. Sometimes, sometimes what's being criticized and how it's being criticized is kind of unnecessary and hateful. I'm not saying that, but not always. Christ. Oh, unnecessary hate. Got it. You unfairly. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> so how, how would you like to respond to that kind of criticism? To the criticism? Like, I have a vagina. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm a funny woman. We are all talented, funny, powerful women we are out here it's going to happen deal with it i'm sorry you're not getting laid it's not about you move on that's my that's not a good way to respond to criticism. So this is a person that, that made the comment and they said, just remember if there is any law, there are any line changes in any anime, any script, anything ever that offend anyone who unironically uses a term like SJW and feminist agenda, I wrote them, I wrote them all. Yep, well, now you're getting replaced by a robot. So I hope you had fun. I hope it, I hope it was enjoyable. Yeah, there it is. Now, I feel like a whole H-bomber guy ass type guy right now, but one of the major reasons why I wanted to do this video was because of the next little part that I'm going to talk about in my anime atrocities chapter. Lovely Complex, 
and Jello Apocalypse. Jello Apocalypse is a YouTuber who has made a lot of videos over a very long time. He has a very respected career, and uh, that's not there anymore, baby! Yeah, probably gonna get into some sort of- Did Jello Apocalypse do like the Tumblr thing? Or like, they did things about social media videos, right? Like they made social media videos? Like explaining social media, like different social medias. Okay, I think I watched those back in the day. A drama here, but you know what? I'm gonna do this freaking top. It's such a shame. I wanted you to watch Jelly Apocalypse stuff. <sighs> Man, I probably should have too. Like I would have, like especially like whatever the Twitter one is, even though like it's vastly different now. Because again, I watch things and I forget them very quickly. So like, I I just Jelly Apocalypse. Jello Apocalypse? I just was like, I recognize that name and like this art a little bit. Big Justice. Lovely Complex is an anime that I watched a while back based on the recommendation of a friend of mine. It was one of his favorite anime. He recommended it to me. I watched it and it was very cute. I feel like I read it. Lovely Complex. I feel like I read some of it and I didn't really mesh with it so I didn't finish it, but um, I maybe I did finish it. I don't fucking remember. Dude, it's a story about a very tall girl and a dude who fall in love and it's very wholesome. It's like even though she's tall and she felt like she couldn't get a guy because she's super tall and he's just some random douchey dude, they fell in love and it was beautiful. Oh man, back in the day. Cause now it's like women like, uh, women shit, guys like mommy characters now, right? But it's like the, I guess the short tall thing is still a problem though. I don't know, get buff. <laughs> it's a pretty wholesome story all in all. I'm not going to lie and say I remember every single story beat that ever happened. It was not my ultimate cup of tea, but it was still pretty cute. And this got a dub. The dub was ma managed by Jello Apocalypse, the YouTuber who did the So This Is Basically what? series, where he basically made a series where he could sarcastically make fun of different pieces of media and stuff. And honestly, while I do love me some criticizing media, especially in a sarcastic... When did he make this dub? Is this recent? Why is it getting a recent dub? Surely it was not recent. Setting. The way this man takes pot shots at stuff like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Adventure Time purely because he doesn't understand the medium and he just has some sort of blatant disrespect for the creators, it's despicable. Now, I know you could say that I'm just reading into it and that's just supposed to be a comedic thing, but Jello Apocalypse is constantly talking about on Twitter how JoJo's is bad, and if you like it, you have objectively shit taste. It was created by a shit guy, probably. That's an opinion that you just said on the internet. Holy shit. What do you mean? Wh this is just going to be a lot of it. This video is just going to be a lot of shots of me just being stunned into silent confusion. Like, like, what do you mean? That is your opinion about JoJo and you're saying it on the internet where everyone can read it. I mean, okay, but then some someone gave you the ability to translate to localize an anime. That is wild. To quote Jello Apocalypse's tweet, please stop making JoJo video essays. I'm so tired of seeing the psychology of ex-villain. You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> I think he's talking about me. And a <laughs> secret reasoning recommended me. in my sidebar. JoJo is an oil slick. It's volatile and fun to look at. But if you assume it has depth and dive into it, you'll hurt your head. And he- First of all, I don't even I, I watched like part of season one of Jojo when they remade Jojo or whatever or when they did like original Jojo like a few years ago probably longer than a few years ago but whatever there's a lot going on there bud and like I understand why people like it so much it is very bara it is very sh like shonen people like shonen stuff like people people like shonen stuff it's fun it's people like a lot of it's good. Like I just, what do you mean? Did you did you watch it? Did you read it? Cause you can say it's not for me. I I personally think it's not really for me, and that's fine. Like that's fine. I watched some of it. Was like, ah, eh, this isn't really my cup of tea. This isn't really for me. I'm somewhat aware of what JoJo is, just because of you know the community I exist within, and that's fine. But I'm not shitting on it. I don't, I'm not going to shit on it. Like, if you like JoJo, I'm happy for you. I can see why. Like, I understand. I, it's, 
like I have this beef with this family and it doesn't matter if I die or if you bury me at the bottom of the ocean. I got beef with this family and I'm going to be their eternal fucking problem. And, you know, I can respect that. <laughs> just I could I could just respect that. I'm going to be 100 percent. Some amazing music comes out of the Jojo anime. 100 uh, percent. Great music. Great memes. Like. Good on you. I'm like, but you can just say like, I don't like this. But like, why do you got beef with it? Like, I make a joke that I have beef with with Kingdom Hearts, but I don't hate on anyone for liking Kingdom Hearts. I will go on a rant about Kingdom Hearts as someone who used to love Kingdom Hearts. Okay, um, and I and I don't really. I'm just traumatized by Kingdom Hearts at this point, but like. I'm not like, how dare you like Kingdom Hearts? No, I, I understand. I love Kingdom Hearts. It was my childhood. I get it. Like, why are you, like, what, like, I would say I have beef with it. Just because when I tried to, like, replay it, I had issues, right? But, like, why you got beef with JoJo? I don't understand. What did it do to you? Because JoJo is just something you sit down and you watch or you sit down and you read it. You don't have to play it. You're not playing against Ursula 20 billion times going, I'm playing on easy. Why the fuck am I still losing? Like, what is this? Like, I... Who hurt you? Like, and why was it JoJo the anime? JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, of all things. Went on tirades about how JoJo's is actually bad and ugly. And believe it or not, that was reflected entirely and is the, so this is just basically JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Listen, I get not liking something. I get criticizing something. But saying sure. that a piece of art is objectively bad is not exactly the direction I would go if I was A, in the industry of adapting art, like yeah. this dude is because he was working on the adaptation for Lovely Complex, or B, creating art. Dude made his own shows on his channel, which... I watched Epithet Erased, and I thought it was kind of mid, not gonna lie. But again, that's a personal take. So he goes on this whole tirade talking about his experience in adapting Lovely Complex. He said he had no passion for it. It was not being paid well for it, but he still was gonna do it. He rewrote a bunch of parts of it to add jokes and make it actually funny. He changed a bunch of the romantic scenes because he's the only guy that knows how to write romance on the planet, apparently. What? That is a quote, by the way. He literally said that I think I'm the only guy that knows how- What? Despite everything about the original incarnation of this anime, this dir- this- Disturb. <laughs> this dub turned out just so funny. We really funneled our frustrations into comedy and wrote a lot of good jokes while also improving as much of the relationship between the leads as possible. There are lots of scenes where Risa yells at uh, Otani and a lot of scenes where Otani reacts to Risa by inappropriately laughing at her. Many of you probably already know this about me, but I am a romantic and love writing actual good romance trademark because no one else on earth seems to know how to do it what the fuck else did he say hold on that is a quote by the way he literally said that i th just uh, okay i think i'm the only guy that knows how to write a good romance these days he, uh, quote literally a quote he thought it was a little bit problem hold on hold on Even though it came out nearly two decades ago, Lovecom did not have a dub until Sound Cadence's CEO, Amber Lee Connors, grabbed the rights to the dub from Discotech because it was an old favorite of hers. Okay, Discotech did not want to order a dub because dubs are typically very expensive, so Sound Cadence endeavored to make the dub while spending as little money as possible. There's that red flag. This production was almost entirely asking people to cash in favors. This leads both the leads both played their parts for free and Marissa was set to write and direct the the ad, adaptation also for free. Twas a labor of love calm. That sounds okay. So in the back in the day lovely complex Love, calm, whatever. Uh, was pretty big on the shoujo scene in the manga reading community. It was pretty big. Um, it got... It wasn't as big as, like, Skip Beat. 
definitely wasn't anywhere near like fucking Nana or anything like that. But it was pretty big. Um, or maybe it was maybe around the same size as Skip Beat at the time of its heyday. Disco tech being like, dubs are expensive, we're not going to do it, means that probably didn't make very much money. Like, it was probably considered a failed anime. Or professional commoner, hello, welcome. Or if not necessarily a failed anime, like not something that is worth putting the money in, localizing it, dubbing it, sending it out to the American market or the English-speaking market at all. So... That would be why it is not, it wasn't, it wasn't going to make money. So they were like, we're not going to do it, right? Because it probably didn't really make that much money in Japan, where it was pretty popular. Takes it, takes a series where people are assholes to each other but becomes lovers. Doesn't understand that the asshole part is important. Yeah, so enemies to lovers, great trope. Very tasty trope. One, one of my, like, higher favored tropes, right? The enemies part is important. I don't, I don't know. Like, what? What? <laughs> scenes because he's the only guy that knows how to write romance on the planet apparently that is a quote by the way he literally said that i think i'm the only guy that knows how to write a good romance these days he, uh, quote literally a quote he thought it was a little bit problematic when it came to the relationship of tall girl and, and douchey guy he thought he treated her not nicely at certain points in the story even though this is the literal sundere story where they originally hate each other and they end up falling in love with each other she he still went out, went out on a limb to talk about how yup it's a problematic relationship and therefore i changed a lot of the dialogue and stuff to make them sound nice to each other the whole time because we need our, our protagonist to be respectful we can't have him be a bit of a douche he can't treat women like that he ends up changing a ton of stuff perhaps the thing lovely complex is most infamous for it's the above character Seiko who happens to be played by Oz in our dub uh, Seiko is an MTF trans girl who is introduced in a trans panic episode it is not great the original episode was a random extra uh, extra out her what the original episode has a random extra out her the rest of the cast making fun of Otani for kissing, quote-unquote, a boy, and gives uh, Nabuko this extremely weird anti-trans radar that makes her dislike Seiko right off the bat. Yeah, you're not going to like this because you don't understand... Japan culture and nuances, like the nuances of J Japanese culture, because like it's different. It is different than America. Like it's just like their cultures are different. Why did you take on this project? Why did you take on, like if everyone else was like, I wanna do this because I love this story and you're just like, I didn't like the story, I didn't get paid much, but whatever, let me make it better. No, fuck off. Have have them find someone who is either willing to do it and, and do it just so they have like experience under their belt and they do it in the most respectful way they possibly can. Find someone who liked the original story and would love to be a part of bringing it to the American audience or uh, the English speaking audience, I should say, not necessarily the American audience. English speaking audience, like, sure. He had nothing but disrespect for the original. In the anime, Haruka and Seiko are the best characters, and every time they show up, the episode gets better. In the original manga, Haruka has a running joke where he constantly uses a grabber arm to try and lift Seiko's skirt to expose her privates, which is a fucked up thing to do, even if it isn't being done for transphobic reasons. This awful gag is alluded to in the anime's opening below, but thankfully does not make it into the show himself. It's also older. 
like I'm not excusing that, but it is also older. And even America has changed drastically in 20 years. In 10 years, even. This is also an older anime from a culture that you, I feel like, don't understand or respect, maybe? You don't expect enough to do research on, on different themes that they have, apparently. Um, but yeah, it's an older series. You know, th you could do things... Um, in the artistic way 20 years ago that people would not let you do today. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that is a fact that the the anime industry and society in general have changed. And they're always going to change. 10 years, 20 years, look back, things are different. It just is. And yeah, I'm kind of glad that we don't kind of have those jokes really like that as much anymore. I do like it. That like, you know, things have changed like that because like I don't really like those kinds of jokes personally. But like you're adapting something that's 20 years old and you're mad that it doesn't fit into what you think is socially acceptable 20 years after it was made like uh, what do you what do you want I, like your expectations or of reality are skewed a piece of art that he was adapting which holy crap why are you doing this you're making millions on youtube i think it's purely to stick it to the anime fans because i'm gonna make this have a really shitty adaptation because it was really shitty and i'm gonna change it all and there was this whole moment at the very end of lovely complex where the actual mangaka the creator of lovely complex did like a whole self-insert thing where she put herself in the story for just one scene at the very end of the show and because he thought that she was so disrespectful in the way that she wrote these characters what? and it was so not progressive of her he managed to find a way to try to cut her out what of the actual story that she wrote he went on this whole this is one of those series that was written by a very strange person kind of like 50 shades of gray and it gets stranger and stranger the longer you look into it the way all the characters talk and interact is wrong the way Risa is painted as the good guy despite despite makes exclusively bad decisions makes everyone feel like it's written by a woman with I hate drama in her Twitter bio and then five separate call-out tweets right below it. You get the sense the author sees the world the same way Risa, Risa does, and Risa is, as a character only makes sense if she is a psychopath who does not understand human empathy. How did this person not get fired from working on this project? Like, I legitimately do not understand why they let this person who abhors and is actively trying to almost sabotage different parts of this project because it was like oh the person that like bought the rights to it to dub it loved the story loved the anime wanted to adapt it and bring it over why did they let this person continue working on it i legitimately don't understand they were trying to do it as cheaply as possible but still like that is crazy to me. Like, just, it, that is crazy to me. Whole tirade talking about how she sounds like she's just your average person that says, I hate drama on Twitter, but then goes ahead and starts a whole lot of drama. When she self-inserted her at the end to as some fashion designer for just some one-off random scene at the very end of Lovely Complex, saying that, I'm gonna make you look good. And that, that was the one line that the mangaka self-insert character had, and Jello Apocalypse said, well, you failed at making her look good. Your writing is trash. So then, Brendan Blabber, the jello apocalypse the big name attached to the project not only did he want to cut her out but when they told him no he made them a threat he said if you do not cut out her line praising herself at the end her own line the creator of this piece of art if you don't cut out her own line of this because this is a problematic work i quit 
What? Literally blackmailing them and extorting them into absolutely bastardizing a piece of art written by somebody else? Who the hell are you? Aside from the sheer wow. disrespect, you're not getting the show you think you're getting. If you wouldn't be pay attention to Twitter discourse, or you wouldn't be watching a video exactly like this one, you have no idea what you're actually watching. You could have just watched Lovely Complex. You could not have known at all that half of what you watched was completely the work of some random narcissistic YouTuber, instead of actually the piece of art that your friend recommended to you because it- I have trust issues. I, when I watch anime, I prefer watching subtitled anime to dubbed anime. This is just a personal preference. 100% personal preference. I feel like by doing that, you get used to certain cultural things. Um, like, you just get used to seeing it. Maybe you, like, do some research. Like, they reference this, and I don't understand it. Let me go look at what it is. So if I watch something else and that gets referenced, I can understand what they're talking about. That kind of stuff. Now, finding out about all of the localization, like, drama, I'm just like, I feel like... I feel like I chose correctly. Like I just, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that we just shouldn't dub stuff. I mean, there's a lot of people that that can't do subtitled anime for various reasons. Some people prefer to do it because they like prefer to have it on and they do other stuff while they're watching it. You know, some people have, are like maybe dyslexic. They have, tr they have trouble with reading subtitles. That's totally cool, I get it. Like there's plenty of reasons like, we should continue doing dubbed anime. I also agree we should continue doing dubbed anime. Not saying no dubs. 100% not saying that. I don't even care if your preference is watching dub. Do whatever works for you. 100% that's your business. I don't think it should be a versus conversation. I think it is a personal preference thing. So whatever. But, like, Jesus Christ, some of this. Like... Holy hell. Also, like, yeah, Japan is really big on on respect in crazy ways. Like, the amount that I feel like this person would be sued if he was working in Japan is kind of crazy. Touched them in a very emotional way. They kill the evidence by publishing it because the vast majority of people that actually consume the piece of media will have absolutely no idea how bastardized it actually is. But the more and more this happens, and the more and more the actual anime industry, I mean, especially in the West, is going to have a stranglehold by people like... Miyazaki sent a sword to Disney. I think it was Pom Poco? Or it was the Tanuki one. I don't know. So, Disney brings over Ghibli movies. Ghibli movies, sorry. Um, and at one point, they were going to change something i think it was the tanuki one um and like miyazaki sent a sword like you're not going to change shit about my stuff like you're not going to change shit if you're going to be the one that brings over my movies you're not going to change anything um it was spirited away it yeah it could have been spirited away i'm not i'm not sure which specifically one but like he was like you're not going to change my art you're not going to change my movies um there will be no cuts you're not going to cut stuff out. If you're going to play my movie, you're going to localize it, quote unquote localize it. If you're going to dub it and play my movie and um, be the one that's the right holders to dis like distributing right holder, you're not going to change it. You're not going to cut anything from it. Nothing. Um, yeah. Like the, these crunchy roll humans that like changing things to fit some sort of agenda, the less authentic stories you are going to be receiving from the rest of the world. There is so much beautiful art out there, and so much of it is just going to become completely tainted, changed, and warped for the sake of selling you something that does not exist. A lot of people feel like their message is the objectively correct message, and because it's the objectively correct message, it gives them some sort of moral divine authority to f*** with and ruin the art created by talented people that have a message. I just don't understand. Like, I really don't. Like, if your job is to localize something, like, here's some anime, localize it. It's like, okay, I'm going to try to keep it as close to the original content as possible and just, like, change some things that, you know, some, jo okay, so there's, like, a lot of jokes in Japanese that have to do with how words sound and, and stuff like that. And so, like, that's not going to translate into English. 
Like, it's just not because English and Japanese does not really sound the same in any way, shape, or like our words aren't correlated in that way. So they have to like change it, right? They have to change the jokes or replace the jokes or whatever. I totally get that. I totally get, you know, sayings not translating, etc. Why are you, why are you trying to change so much of it though? I really don't understand. Like, I don't understand. Other than like, hey, we're going to try to push this agenda in some way, shape, or form. That's not your job. Why are you doing that? I don't. I just don't get it. And a emotion that they want to share with the world and makes it feel like you have some sort of divine right to choose. He sent it to Miramax for Princess Mononoke, the sword. Go for him. I love Princess Mononoke. Is what art gets consumed and how it affects the people that consume it. As Personal a consumer, pride, you have to maybe. recognize that everything you're getting is going through the, the hands of being tainted by millions of people and constantly trying to one-up each other with different moral high grounds and ethical platitudes that you're not going to be receiving the thing that you want to be receiving. It is a net L for the entire world. And it is the death of art as you know it. Art is something that can be created by anyone. I can create art. You can create art. And by doing that, you are putting something into the world that could touch millions of people, especially with the internet that we can access anything. You have no idea how beautiful and widespread true art can actually be. But with the overly pasteurized, corporatized slot machine that is modern entertainment. That's entirely off the subject. So the X in his mask is like see-through, trans transparent. Sorry, I'm eating bread. So like it keeps changing colors and like when he moves, like you'll see, like it'll catch some of the hat or whatever. Nux got a hole in his head. Cause I assume his head goes like this or maybe like this either way. Maybe he just has really fluffy hair. Either way, I feel like he has a hole in his head. <laughs> and that beautiful true art is going to be lost. And suddenly, the only true art you're going to see nowadays is a meme on Twitter because they ain't changing those. You can see these <laughs> relatively mediocre YouTube videos like I make. And yeah, I think they, that I enjoy them. I'm sure some people like them. But the true... I, I know what it's referencing. I'm just saying that the X part is transparent. So. Big works of art that are worked on by dozens and dozens of people could just be snuffed out because of a wild, disturbing, disingenuous, greedy company just yeah. like trying to promote some sort of agenda that you may or may not agree with and they feel like they have the ethical high ground to not give a shit. And speaking of, we're working... <laughs> also, taking Lovely Complex... And being like, I want to bring this to the Western market, English speaking market, 20 years later is wild. All right. There's some older anime that I really like. There's some, like, not even that, that much older anime. Like, stuff that's, like, less than 20 years old, I think, that I personally really like. And like, it never got a dub. But I wouldn't be like, today, let's dub it. Things are fucking different. I don't think it's gonna do well. The scene is different. Why would something from, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago do well in today's market? If it didn't hit really big back then, it's not gonna hit really big now. That's, that's my opinion. I'm sad. That Tiger and Bunny didn't get put on fucking Toonami back in the day because I think it would have done really well on the Western market. Like, that shit's great. And it's funny. And it's covering brands. It's, it's like superhero NASCAR. Let's go. Like, <laughs> I just... <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm upset about that, but they didn't put it on Toonami. And so, you know, it is what it is. Also, if you watch Tiger and Bunny, I think it's on Netflix. There's a lot of scenes, specifically in the opening, where they kind of zoom in on different parts of the superheroes in, like, a weird way. Because they're just, like, kind of holding on, like, the chest plate of one of the superheroes or whatever. And you're like, why are they doing that? They're supposed to be covered in branding. Like, their superhero suits are covered in brands. Like, uh, Bandai, SunTrust, 
um, Pepsi. They're a different, literal, different company brands, like actual real life company brands. And all that got scrubbed when it got put on Netflix. So that's why there's some stuff where it's like it's there's weird scenes, like cut scenes in it. And it's it's just it's funny to me personally. But um, yeah, it doesn't have the logos. Um, so I'm a little mad. Cabal Cheeks, hello, welcome. Um, but anyway, like I just, just taking something that old and being like, it, I'm gonna localize it and dub it and it's gonna do so well. No, it's not. I mean, I guess that's maybe why they were trying to do it as cheaply as possible because like they're doing it as a passion project and they know that it's not gonna make a lot of money. I assume, I don't know, but still, wild. <laughs> We're working about getting to probably the worst part of this entire essay. What do you mean the worst part? The Velma part wasn't the worst part? Corporate catastrophe. I took distinct care to specifically be talking about specific series, shows, and movies that were absolutely butchered in the good name of pushing some sort of agenda. And I made sure that that was the absolute bulk of the video purely because ultimately you have to realize it's happening before recognizing the villains. And while obviously there is no centralized eye of Sauron that's dealing with all this stuff, I do think that there are definitely a lot of contributing factors. The largest of them being Twitter activism. A nebulous, anomalous force that no one can actually possibly comprehend the great- This shit is wild to me. Like my Twitter- <laughs> Fuck. My Twitter algorithm is very like I have to fix it every once in a while because I keep accidentally fucking it up um, or the people that I follow fuck it up for me um, and then I just like fix it by you know reblogging stupid amounts of fan art anyway um, like I curate your okay most social medias not all most of them have algorithms now and like what those algorithms do is they suggest shit that that based on what you interact with, they're like, you like this, here's things we suggest. Now, not everything does, but a lot of them have algorithms, right? Curate your so your online social spaces. That's the end of that sentence, just curate those. So like my Twitter algorithm is just like fan art and like little thread fan fictions and like, that's mostly it. I mean, like, so I have like my like this is this is my like fandom one where this is my brain rot Twitter and like this is my stream Twitter and stream Twitter has like a lot of VTuber stuff. Are we surprised? We should not be. Um, it's mostly VTuber stuff because if you interact with any VTuber or anything, you are gonna get it shoved in your face. It's gonna take over your algorithm. Just a heads up. So, you know, my Twitter, my VTuber Twitter, my stream Twitter, VTuber stuff, my um, brain rot Twitter is like, like I said, it's like fan f fiction and stuff. And every once in a while, I like have to fix it. And by that, I mean, I go and I like, I just reblog and like 50 billion things all at like one time because I'm like, hey, I got to fix my algorithm. This is what I want to look at. Um, but just... Curate your spaces. Like, when people are like, oh, I can't take being on Facebook anymore. I'm like, I don't have that. First of all, I don't go on Facebook very much anyway. But, like, I don't really have that issue because I curate my space to what I want to see and who I want to see. And, like, the issue of that is you get echo chambers. You have to be careful not to get echo chambers. If you don't know what an echo chamber is, everyone, everyone says and agrees on the same thing so you don't get outside opinions. But my social media, I just use to look at fan art. So it, it that's about it. Like uh, drama's happening. I'm slightly aware that there's drama's happening in one of my communities. I don't know what the fuck is happening and I don't care. I'm gonna be honest because I'm here for the fan art and the fan fiction. That's it. That's all I'm here for. I don't need to know about this petty drama that's happening with you guys. Like, it, oh my God, y'all are making fan art and y'all are writing fan fiction and I don't understand why there's beef. I don't understand what the beef is about. So, like, that's just me personally. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I mean, I guess when I'm like, curate, curate your feeds or whatever that is, 
That is how you get echo chambers. But I'm just here for a good time and I'm here for fan fiction. So I don't know. I don't have this problem, I guess. But like, jeez, uh, I don't know. Powers or fears that they actually hold upon the throats of man. But because of these nebulous concepts flying around, somehow, somewhere, a couple of bullshit ass company. I'm just saying, I'm just saying there's enough negativity out in the world. I just want my Twitter to not be shoving negativity in my face. That's it. That's it. I don't really have a Twitter space. Like, I'm not space. I don't have, like, a following or anything. I'm just sitting here like, hee, hee, hee. MXTX, Call of Duty, Sailor Moon. Like, whatever the hell I look at that's fan art that I like and I reblog it. Like, that's it. That's all I want. I don't want more negatively negativity breathing down my neck. I'm aware that there's a lot of negativity out there and a lot of terrible things happening. I'm very aware of it. Thank you. Every once in a while, you need a break from that. So I'm saying. He's managed to somehow take powers in the ass crack of society, breathing the Twitter fumes that give their lives purpose and meaning. And they found a way to become the viruses to manipulate the flesh puppets that is modern media, contorting wow. art into works of absolute debauchery. You see, I went really hard analyzing various series until this point from different perspectives, but you don't understand how long the list could be if I just went for broad abominations in this atmosphere. The Halo TV show being an abomination. The Witcher. Wait, the Halo TV show came out? <laughs> Speaking of abominations, I didn't even know that. Maybe I did. I don't know. That feels like something I would watch, though. Like, I'd be like, oh, there's like a big, like, video game show that I didn't know about uh, or that I didn't play. Let's go watch it. I watched the Fallout TV show. I like that. I thought it was fun. The Halo people didn't even play Halo. Yeah, I, that was talked about earlier. It's already on Blu-ray? Wild. I know, like, The Witcher. So I didn't watch Witcher 3. I started watching it, and then I was like, I feel like it's been too long since I watched 2. And then, like, there's the whole thing about 4. Like, I get it, like, because it's new people. But, like, I don't know. Being such a travesty. It has two seasons? The Halo TV show has two seasons? I didn't even know it was existed. Oh, my God. ...that Henry Cavill had to, had to literally seppuku himself to get off the stage. Bro, The Witcher was not even about The Witcher anymore. It, it took The Witcher to make The Witcher, not even the main character of the show, focus on every other character in the universe that happens to not be a white guy instead of The Witcher, and surprise, everyone hated it. But the real villains are not the individuals that are bastardizing these art. No, those people are the mere flesh lights, the cum socks, the goddamn symptoms of the disease, but not the Bro. disease itself. They are the tumors that are created by a metastasized cancer. But the cancer? That's the outrage farming flesh balls that make believe they have some semblance of morals or ethics that they try to trounce down everyone that disagrees with them. We're talking about the corporate calamities, baby. The best known of them, Sweet Baby Inc. From the Assassin's what? Creed Valhalla all the way to Suicide Squad, Sweet Baby Inc. has been a blight on the goddamn game. I don't know what Sweet Baby Ink is. I'm gonna be honest. Gaming industry. For those of you that are unfamiliar with their reign okay, of terror, me. Yes, you will be hello. surprised that they are just the ones that got exposed until now and got harassed in the public form, that got humiliated and shamed the way they all should be humiliated and shamed. Sweet Baby Ink is a diversity inclusion consulting company. You probably have no idea what that okay. even means, to be honest. And it's a consulting company that tries to get you to include diversity within your content. That's what I'm going to assume. Okay, a consulting company. Those exist for a reason. All right. And I envy you if you don't. But what that is, is you basically have a game that wants to release. Let's say it's Suicide Squad, for example. They want to release their game. They had people mm -hmm. working on it. Lots of time, lots of effort <laughs> went into this new game, and it's going to be great. But the thing is, Sweet Baby Inc. is sitting there twiddling their thumbs and saying, well, if you're not inclusive enough, well, we might have to try to cancel you on Twitter and get you harassed. What? You know all the harassment that happened when- Wait, what? Like, they're not even getting hired? They're just... What? Hogwarts Legacy is finally available to pre-order, learn spells, brew potions, grow plans, get to blah, 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 blah. Okay. 
Friendly reminder, don't buy this game. The people who worked on it have already been paid. This doesn't need your support. Trans people are more important than a wizard school you can't let go of. Don't stab us in the back. And Hogwarts Legacy came out because they were somewhat associated with J.K. Rowling, who's not very beloved in the public forum these days. Well, <laughs> we're going to do that to you. And uh, I don't think you'll be able to withstand the backlash. So unless you want to make sure that you're not going to get absolutely canceled and railed by us activists that are being active to promote something or other... The company who made so Son Wong Kong game said they got blackmailed by Sweet Baby Inc. but didn't go for it. Am I going to have to look up Sweet Baby Inc. controversy? Like, am I going to have to look that up? You have no choice but to pay us a fee to consult you and talk about what shit you have to cut out of your game. Are they threatening companies to hire them? Are they threatening to try to ruin them if they don't hire them? Is that, what's, is that what you're telling me? And what crap you have to add to it to create a homunculus that somehow the public may not cancel you and humiliate you for. And you know what? It freaking worked. 99% of these game companies or creators of- That is the claim? You're supposed to be a service? I mean, I guess if they're like, you know, we're not getting like hired, so we have to threaten these companies so they hire us. Jesus Christ. How do you not get sued? Any merit, do not want to get canceled in public for something random. And if paying Sweet Baby Inc. a couple of dollars for them to basically protect you from the public back. I hate their logo. Flash. Well. We might as well do that because believe it or not, the top corpo juggernauts in any of these games, they don't give a shit about diversity and crap. They just want to sell games and they feel like having a sweet baby ink check mark might actually help them not get canceled by someone else and therefore maybe can help them sell more games. But if they're blackmailing and threatening you, I assume they're doing it over text and you can, if you release the game and then they start a hate campaign. If they're somehow, t if you can prove the ties to them to the hate campaign, like if they post like, oh, this wasn't blah, 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 and they wouldn't, they wouldn't, you know, use us, blah, 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 you can then take your text and be like that. I mean, I don't know. It is, it is hard, but still. Uh, certain companies have enough money to, who's got more money in this? The gaming companies or Sweet Baby Inc. consultant? Because like some companies will just try to drown you in legal fees by stretching out uh, lawsuits forever so that you can, so that you basically run out of money. Like that's the thing that corporations do, so. I feel like there is a silent or maybe not even so silent extortion campaign done by a lot of these diversity, inclusion, lovely, lovey-dovey acceptance consulting companies that basically kind of force and heavy hand different corporations into working with them or they will come at you later for just not being a nice guy enough. And under the threat of this public scrutiny and shaming, they buckle and Sweet Baby Inc. swoops in and ruins your game. The way Sweet Baby Inc. actually got exposed and harassed and blasted by the public is honestly one of the most hilarious Streisand effects of all time. There was someone on Steam who made uh, basically a, a group called Sweet Baby Inc. Detected, where he would talk about all the games that actually use Sweet Baby Inc. when it came to creating their games and helping and consulting to diversify their cast or whatever. And surprise, literally all the big flops of the AAA industry of recent happened to work with Sweet Baby Inc. Well, not a lot of people took notice. Wow. Maybe had like 10,000 followers at the time. And then Sweet Baby Inc. themselves, the goddamn cuckolds of the industry that are sitting in their chair and watching the action go down, go onto Twitter, start harassing the guys who made the freaking Steam list of games that worked with them, targeted them with harassment, basically threatened Steam to try to deplatform them and get rid of all their games or something because they are harassing them and shit. They spread all sorts of slanderous garbage about this. This Jesus is a Christ. massive drama, huge situation that happened over a long period of time. And they strice and affected other people to know this was going on, look into this list. And currently that Sweet Baby Inc. detected list on Steam has 400,000 people on it Jesus that have Christ. all joined the Steam list and are now staunch Sweet Baby Inc. haters as they should be. Because this company frankly should not exist. It is not up to you to point fingers at different people's works of art and feel like you have the God-given right to f around with it. 
intentions are pure or otherwise. Maybe I'm just a cynical bitch, but I think it's otherwise. After Sweet Baby Ink <laughs> finally got under the microscope, everybody talked about it. I talked about it on my second channel extensively. My boy Mudahar covered it a lot. My other boy Asmongold covered it a lot. This became a huge, massive, shit disturbing talking point where they kept exposing themselves again and again and again with all these old interviews of them popping up talking about how well they just hate white people and stuff it's as simple as that and something that is locked in place so something that does not want to change and something that is locked in place so despite like the changing face of audiences despite the changing face of conferences like this one, we still look at our core demographics and say, okay, they're white, cis, hetero males. And we cater almost exclusively to them. And the problem is that we don't just cater to them like, you know, here, here's something that we think you'll enjoy. We cater to them the way that we cater to like a picky baby. We feed them the same thing that we know that they love and we keep on feeding it. We're like, here you go, we, you love it. Eat this, eat this, eat this. So that then when they get anything else, they react as a picky baby would, which is be like, oh no, thank you. I do not want this. And we've actually done this so long that what we're doing is creating an entire nation of picky babies. And so this clip right here is kind of wild. Like it's, it's, it's again, I think the big problem Make good games with good stories. That, that's it. Make good games with good stories. So the, the argument that this person is saying is that um, basically the game in, gaming industry keeps making games where the main character is a cis hetero white male kind of going through the same motions over and over. And if you deviate from that, then everyone, very specifically the target demographic that is cis hetero white men, apparently, refuse to do anything with your game. And so I guess their idea is like you have to have, like everybody collectively has to have, um, my brain stopped. This is melting my brain. Like, you know, people of other races, people of other genders, people of other sexual orientations, all that other stuff in, in all of the games. Like, all of the games need that, I guess. I don't know. But I'm just like, just make a good fucking game. Like, just... Like, that's it. You want people to buy your game and play it? Make a good fucking game. That's, that's it, really. Yeah, I, I need to reboot because my, this video is making my brain melt because like, like it's a good video. I'm not saying that. It's just like, it's a hurting my brain. It's hurting my ideas. <laughs> yeah, calling the tar, like being like, this is our target demographic and they are picky babies. Like. Why do people look down so much on their target and demographic is what I don't really fully understand. Like, if that is your target, if your target demographic is cis, hetero, white male, men, whatever, white males, then yeah, you're going to cater to them. You're going to cater to what they buy, what they seem to like, because you just stated that that is your target demographic. That's what target demographics mean, that you're targeting a specific demographic in this case cis hetero white males and you've done research and you figured out what they specifically like and you're targeting them so you're just going to continue releasing what they like because you want money i mean what do you wh is diversity important yeah Ch yes sure but is if do you not understand what a target demographic is? Like, I just... What? And like, like, I... Oh, this is why my brain's melting out of my ears right now. Like, do you not know what a target demographic means? You're allowed to target other demographics, one. Two, yeah, you're allowed to change up the stuff 
that your target, like you're allowed to experiment and try to get your target quote unquote demographic to like more things. Like that's totally fine. That is absolutely fine. Trying to put diversity into games that have a target de- demographic so that they maybe will be willing to play other games that is outside of what they're used to. Totally fine. I get that. But like, I don't even know. Like, I, am I stupid? Like, I feel stupid. Like, do I just not, like, what? Did I just not understand? I don't know. The problem is if you're like a normal person and you look at shit like this, specifically isolating the whole white cis hetero male crowd. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, Go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Um, I'm sorry? Terrify them about what is going to happen if they don't give you the inclusion you want. Take them out to a coffee. It sounds like you're like, take them out to a coffee and tell them that you're going to fucking murder them if they don't give you inclusion. Like, what? Like, I'm going to come to your house. Like, what? Ma'am, you needed to word that differently. I I don't know. (laughs) Also, the biggest game of the year, Baldur's Gate. Most popular character made were... Uh, Tefling Twinks, so maybe just make good games because those picky babies apparently want to be Twinks if your game is good. (laughs) I know, I know, like, what she's saying is, like, you're gonna get cancelled if you don't give the inclusion, but it, like, the way she worded that was, like, threaten to go to their house and murder them. Like, I'm like, what? <laughs> That's a nice family you got there. She was something happened to them when I showed up to your house because you didn't, in- you weren't, your game wasn't inclusive enough. Like what? <laughs> Holy hell! Oh my god! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Anytime, like Baldur's Gate, Dragon Age. Anytime, there's like options with character creation. People make wild characters and character creations that give them a lot of wiggle room okay so like there's that and then they romance whoever the hell they want all the time and then like they'll romance everybody they will romance every single person just to be like yeah i romance everybody and like (laughs) as like this weird colored person like i don't know like (sighs) oh my god just make a good game like that's just make a good game it doesn't matter who's the main character If you make a good game, people will buy it and people will play it. That's it. That's it. (sighs) Right. And so let me explain really what that terror is. Five tweets that go viral and then nobody actually cares after that. The thing that they don't seem to understand when criticism is coming their way, it's not criticism coming from the other side. Ever since this all went down, people like, I don't know. Me, Mudahar, and Asmongold, what a coincidence, it's hilarious, all started getting called these insane alt-right Nazi titles on Twitter and shit, simply because we are fighting for art to not get butchered, contorted, and perverted by a greedy-ass company that wants to contort and extort other companies into pushing their agenda. Also, just, like, this doesn't look good on consulting companies. Like, if you're, like, a consulting company and you're out there, like, saying... Basically, threaten your marketing team, scare your marketing team by threatening them to hire us, like, like terrify them until they hire us. Like, that doesn't look good on you. Like, I don't know. Like, you could have worded that differently, I think. And then also just like it doesn't really look good if it's like, hey, so there's this like consulting firm that has been like blackmailing companies. That doesn't make me want to work with you. It doesn't make me want to take any of your opinions and make them into reality. Like, because at the end of the day, what's, what's, what's going to get you more money? Or, like, save you more, whatever. Doing what they threaten, like, doing what this consulting company wants, or just releasing a good game. Because apparently, they've 
been involved with a lot of busts, you know? Like, not good games. I, fucking, I don't know. Or else they are going to get slandered in the public eye. Damn. Instead of defending yourself, much easier to just call your opponent a Nazi, right? Because if you just dehumanize your opponent, well then, pff, no one's gonna listen to them. <laughs> Am I right? I'm not gonna go into this whole 30-minute debacle about Sweet Baby Ink right now. Uh, you could check out literally a billion videos on the internet covering this, from me to Mudahar to Asmongold and everywhere. But what you may not be aware of is the fact that Sweet Baby Ink, once again, is not the evil juggernaut here. They are not the raid boss. They are not even one of the demon generals. They are just a mid-rank dungeon mob, and there's a million more of them. Allow me to introduce you to... Gamer X. Gamer spelt with a gay in it. There was this other massive situation recently where Pokemon Go, Pokemon went into the trash can, and they decided to update everyone's avatars to turn everyone fat and ugly. It was a pretty huge buff, honestly. It was pretty great. Y'all remember that? You probably don't. It wasn't a ba major deal. It wasn't a huge... I, I haven't played Pokemon Go since it basically came out. I had an iPhone 5 at the time thing or anything uh all they did is simply tweet out that we want you to look more like your avatars and then they morphed every single one of them to look <laughs> like nurgle from warhammer lore now i know what you're thinking okay so pokemon go made a uppity that also that last week was like i can't believe they did that to my character i feel like they didn't do that to your character. I feel like you might have done that to your character. That doesn't matter, does it? Well, it kind of does, because it seems like this was very pushed by Gamer X, another Sweet Baby Inc., just with a different freaking name. It's the same company, and they've been doing this to tons of games and media that everyone's been hating on for all their wacky changes, butchering all forms of customization and trading it into this gelatinous blob of love and acceptance. They just diagnosed every person playing all their games with Lizzo and went on with their life. Apparently, a lot of very borderline illegal shenanigans happened in Gamer X recently. And, you know, honestly, this is not the place for that. I'm not here to call out individuals that are scumbags that are working with these inclusivity companies. You know, these moral arbiters of right and wrong that happen to have committed lots of crimes, like the Sweet Baby Ink guys that said death to all Jews. I mean, just because he said that, it doesn't mean he shouldn't be a mortal, moral arbiter. Am I right, guys? Or what about the, the freaking me? Sweet Baby Ink guy that decided to DDoS a woman's charity of in the past and admitted to it publicly on Twitter. No, we're not covering any of that. This is not personal attacks on people that work in these companies. We are investigating the disease, not the symptoms. Bruh. But whether it's Sweet Baby Inc. or Gamer X or probably another dozen completely irrelevant, useless companies that are doing the same exact thing, butchering art for the sake of nothing and the sake of an ideology that they don't deserve to push upon you. And while it's bad in Western media for sure, and butchering the Western media a billion percent, it's a travesty and it is an affront against art. It is vandalism and it should be treated as such. The lengths these companies like to go to when it comes to butchering propaganda from other countries, like, you know, a cartoon about children playing card games, you have no idea how far these sleaze balls go because they feel like they will never get caught. Crunchyroll is a very, very popular anime streaming service. It's been around for a very, very long time and. What am I about to learn? Fun fact, if you didn't know, Crunchyroll originated as a way to illegally watch anime. It was a free anime watching site that was technically illegal. Like it didn't it, sh it didn't have the rights to the things that it was showing. Um, much like there's some others out there that became legitimate. It, it was an illegal pirated streaming site. It became a legal site by contacting people. I don't know. I don't know exactly how it became legal, but it is now legal and it is now like very important. But back in the day, it was an illegal site. Um, so what are they doing now? And they shame people constantly for pirating anything. They will sponsor YouTubers to make anti-piracy videos all the time because they want to shame you into feel like you are not supporting the very, very small, tiny niche anime industry. How often do you have people talking about in their sponsors or their videos, especially if- You're gonna tell me? Okay. So they, they're basically like, uh, shame people for pirating even though we used to be the pirated website. 
wow. about five years ago. This video is sponsored by Crunchyroll, everybody. Big shocker Rooney. Definitely go to Crunchyroll to support the actual industry. Do you love anime? Well, this is a niche hobby and support. I mean, to be fair, you have two options right now for very specifically anime, like direct anime stuff. I mean, yeah, you have... There's anime on every streaming platform right now. There just is. But if you want, like, the anime website, you have two options. You have High Dive and you have Crunchyroll. Those are your two options. Um, why? Because shenanigans and Crunchyroll now bought out the Funimation streaming service and all this other shit. But, like... Jeez. The industry by going to Crunchyroll, they're gonna take all that money you give them and probably make their own anime, like called freaking High Guardian Spice, where they proudly tap themselves on the back and proudly roar into the air as they say, Don't worry, guys, we have not hired a single straight white guy on the entire production team of this because we care about uh, not good content. That's not what they care about because you'd think they'd hire people based on their qualifications, not skin color. That actually sounds kind of racist, I'm not gonna lie. Aside from the constant and blatant changes in localization, subtitling, and all that stuff, this is just insane. For them to try to convince us that we need to support Crunchyroll because we don't, they don't believe in piracy and piracy is theft, but you also don't own the stuff you pay for. If you don't own what you pay for, then piracy ain't theft. And also, don't sit there, twiddle your thumbs, and make it feel like we have a moral imperative to support you because you're supporting our hobby if you're going to take... That's an interesting take that has been floating around. So basically, there have been multiple things where you can buy or rent content, specifically buying content, whether it be digital content specifically, video games, movies, etc. And now those companies have come out and claimed... Just because you bought it doesn't mean you own it because they've been deleting content that people have purchased off their devices. Video games disappearing, like movies, shows, etc. disappearing because they're like, just because you bought it um, digitally doesn't mean that you own it. Um, I personally really like owning physical media, like physical copies of things, um, specifically video games. But that's not always possible. Like, especially nowadays, it's becoming harder and harder to buy a physical copy of something. Because in general, companies don't... It's cheaper for companies just to put it out on streaming services or just for you to download it digitally. And we are going into a more digital society. Like, as a society, we are pushing more digital content. Like, we're more digital. We're not doing physical content anymore. You know, as as we go, you know, books are probably going to start going full digital. Like we are already like pushing audio books and we're pushing, um, you know, uh, e-books and stuff like that. So that's going to continue being a thing. Right. We're going to go probably eventually completely digital, which sucks to me personally because I like owning things. Um, but like, yeah. And when you go and you buy a physical copy of things now because a lot of like video game things they don't have disc readers or whatever so like now you go and you buy a physical copy and it's just a download it's like a cardboard disc instead of like a plastic one it's a cardboard disc in the box that has the code for you to download it online um you know nintendo you for the switch you can still buy physical copies of switch games i try to do that some aren't available as a physical copy unfortunately it's like specifically indie games a lot of times aren't and I get it, they're indie games. Um, but like, I, I like having, you know, physical media. But the argument that just because I bought it digitally means I don't own it, then if I pirate it, what's, what's wrong with pirating, right? Because like, you just said I don't own it if I buy it. So if I don't own it, no matter what, then where's the crime here? I just, I'm just saying. I'm gonna go back a little bit. To make it feel like we have a moral imperative to support you because you're supporting our hobby if you're gonna take our funds and create absolute garbage out of it like Hard Guardian Spice. And the real shockeroonie is. Crunchyroll started as a piracy yep. anime website. It's only when they felt like a more lucrative route they could actually take is through actual licensing that they went full 100% kosher and decided to go all this entire... 
I do want to say I'm not telling you to go pirate stuff. That is not what I'm saying. I, I'm just saying, like, because he brought it up. And let me go back, because I don't remember where exactly it was. But he did mention it in his rant. Like, we have a moral imperative to support you because... That's not what they care about because you'd think they'd hire people based on their qualifications, not skin color. That actually sounds kind of racist, I'm not going to lie. Aside... Yeah, like you want the you want the creators and the people that worked on it to get money. Like I'm I'm yes, that is why you pay for it. I'm just saying I don't know what I'm saying. From the constant and blatant changes in localization, subtitling and all that stuff, this is just insane. For them to try to convince us that we need to support Crunchyroll because we don't they don't believe in piracy and piracy is theft. But you also don't own the stuff you pay for. If you don't own what you pay for, then piracy ain't theft. And also, okay, so that's what he's talking about. Piracy is theft. But if you don't own it, even if you pay for it, then how is piracy theft? And the answer is that it is theft from the corporation because you're not paying the corporation that that came out with it, right? That is the answer to that. But like, if I can't, if I purchase it and I still don't own it, and you can at any point in time delete it from my library, but you're taking my money, like that's crazy. Like that is crazy to me. I don't so know. Don't sit there, twiddle your thumbs, and make it feel like we have a moral imperative to support you because you're supporting our hobby. If you are going to take our funds and create absolute garbage out of it, like Hard Guardian Spice. And the real shockeroony is Crunchyroll started as a piracy anime website. It's only when they felt like a more lucrative route they could actually take is through actual licensing that they went full 100% kosher and decided to go all this entire reign of justice route. Crunchyroll, the second Space Marine Legion of the Imperium of Man, ladies and gentlemen. And this is, again, Again, just a symptom. I don't want you to think that this is the disease. It, they are not the disease. Let me introduce you to Disco Tech. Disco Tech is a smaller, less successful Crunchyroll that works on retro anime and retro huh. games and a lot more niche topics and stuff like that. I and I did a deep dive on Disco they existed. Tech specifically on my second channel, Nuxanor. It'll be linked in the description if you want. Dimitri Monroe made a really freaking good video about that. Again, I want to make clear this entire segment of the video is not going after these individual companies as much as pointing out that this is a blight on society and art. Remember that big lovely complex change I was talking about earlier with uh, Jeff? I mean, I know they were part of the, the lovely complex. What do you mean I do know discotech? Do I? I don't think I do other than the... You shop at their store at cons all the time. Do I? It rings no bells. It brings no bells. <laughs> to be fair, I a lot of times I don't know like the names of uh, vendors at cons. So, Hello Apocalypse that basically ended his entire career in the anime industry by backstabbing and talking about how he hated the source material and how he made it the trans. It's one of the vendors with a bunch of Blu-rays and DVDs. I haven't bought anime Blu-rays and DVDs in a minute. So I personally, I've probably looked at their stuff, but I don't remember buying anything from them. The anime of all time, all proud of himself that he would take characters and just change their genders for the sake of inclusivity and shit. Well, uh, enough of that. <laughs> because you see, Discotech actually has been doing this all the time. Literally all the time. And when Jello Apocalypse got exposed for this, Discotech, the people that have literally been doing this for the last 10 years, threw Jello Apocalypse under the bus and made it seem like he was the only guy that was doing that, when in actuality it is the doctrine of their entire corporation. Every time someone in an anime says, hey, you're flat-chested, you know, like the, the old school anime insult, they'll always change that to you're a tomboy because we, we can't insult the, the the flatness of women's chests in this co in this company because because uh, it, it's, it's wrong it's immoral they kept doing interviews and working with anime news network doing mm. interviews with people that the created megal there's like what there's like three boob sizes there's flat chested there's medium and there's honkers <laughs> Box, for example, and translated all boobs are good boobs, just saying. And Megalobox interview into the guy talking about how the main character suffers and trying so hard to not. The translation on the Megalobox interview is checked by a native Japanese speaker on Anime News Network's side, and it was directly approved by TMS. There are no issues of misrepresenting the creative staff. 
already got some fucking bozos in the comments asking what the actual Japanese term was used that Frog Coon translated as to- toxic masculinity. Just asking questions. Maybe try not thinking the entire country of people are politically neutral machines. Not fall into the trap of toxic masculinity. That was how they translated the interview. And people were like, there's no way the creator of Megalobox gave a shit about t- and talked about toxic masculinity. And they denied. I don't particularly carry the way that I have my own thoughts. They said it's not true and we're not releasing the Japanese interview, but uh, but but it's not true. You're calling it's lies. It's literally all lies. Anyway, they later ended up revealing the Japanese interview. And no, he was not talking about toxic masculinity at all. He was just talking about how his dad was a deadbeat dad and he didn't want to be a deadbeat dad type guy too, which is not the same thing. And I can go into more and more and more and more examples of all of these things about discotech, about Crunchyroll, about sweet baby. Entirely off the subject because y'all went a little ham with my boob mention flat is just as medium is premium and oh bye baby ink about gamer x and all these things that they've all been doing but they all have one thing in common they have zero artistic integrity and whether that's due to some sort of massive ideological push where they feel like they have the god-given right to destroy the art created by other people for the sake of propaganda or there is a massive monetary or public social group incentive to doing this shit. The point is it's happening and you should not be okay with it. Here is what my boy, George R.R. R. Martin said about this oh, exact, here we go. exact thing. Uh, that was all back in t- 2022. Oh, Very little has changed since then. If anything, things have gotten worse. Everywhere you look, there are more screenwriters and producers eager to take like that's the, the they think they can do a better job than him. <laughs> no, you can't eager to take great stories and make them their own. It does not seem to matter whether the source material was written by Stan Lee, Charles Dickens, Ian Fleming, Ronald Dahl, Ursula K. DeLuyne, J.R.R. Tolkien, Mark Twain, Raymond Chandler, Jane Austen, or well anyone. No matter how major a writer is, no matter how great the book is, there's always seems to be someone on hand who thinks he can do it better. Eager to take this story and improve on it the book is the book the film is the film they will tell you as if they were saying something profound then they make the story their own they never make it better though 999 times out of a thousand they make it worse it's like you think that you could do it better than tolkien just stop bro like stop what are you doing grm hates fan fiction (laughs) paste i i Long been an opponent of fan fiction, taking characters in, putting them together in, in unlikely sexual situations. Uh, uh. Don't shame me, sir. <laughs> Y'all. When Anne Rice died, oh my God, the fan fiction community. For those of you who don't know, Anne Rice hated fan fiction and would have lawyers send cease and desist letters out and threaten lawsuit against anyone using her intellectual property to write fan fiction. And so if you read if you read old fan fiction from like early 2000s, there will have disclaimers at the top of every fucking fan fiction you read that is like I do not own this intellectual property. The characters world whatever blah 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 is owned by the original author of the original content. This is a fan created using just these characters. I do not own these characters, etc. Right? Because of Anne Rice. And when Anne Rice passed away, I'm pretty sure there was like people were like, we're gonna get flooded with so many Anne Rice work fan fictions because like she's not around to since and desist anymore. Like she hated fan fiction. Um But yeah, I mean, I can get, I can, mm. fun fact, there's a lot of fan fiction that disappear from wherever they're posted and suddenly there's a novel that is very eerily similar to that fan fiction except suddenly it's not a Kylo Ren AU fan fiction. They have different names and in a slight in a different universe or whatever. And like the most famous of that, by the way, 
Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey was originally Twilight fan fiction. It's an alternate universe Twilight fan fiction. Um, and obviously there weren't vampires involved in it. Um, she changed the names and published it as a novel. But there's definitely more. You can definitely find them. Um, definitely a lot of like novels that get published. Not a lot. There's a decent amount. I don't even know. I don't even know what the number is. But fan fictions that blow up will like it's like a thing on AO3. If your fan fiction is really, really, really good and it disappears, wait around long enough, it will probably appear as a book somewhere with different names. Which is kind of funny. Um, but like, you know. You know, what I don't know doesn't hurt me, so I, if, if people want to do that, fine. But don't, don't send it to me and expect me to prove it or something. Oh, yeah. Like, don't, don't fucking send your fan fiction to the uh, creators. Also, don't send your fucking fan fiction to, like, the people that, like, the voice actors of the characters. That's fucking weird. I don't understand why people do shit like that. Like, um, there was, like, this whole thing where, like, People would send, like, okay, so I'm in the Call of Duty fandom, right? Just the fandom. I've never played the games. You can have your feelings about that. That's fine. I got sucked into the fandom. Having a great time. People would be sending, like, fan, like, innocent fan art of just your character. Like, it's, like, it's the just your character. Here is fan art of your character from this video game. That's fine. I'm sure they don't care about that. Especially if it's innocent, not sexual, or fetishy in any way. It's just them standing there, whatever. Sending, like, sexual stuff, erotic stuff, fan fiction, fan art, anything. Don't, don't send that to whoever voiced the character or created the character. Like, that is weird. Don't do that. That seems disrespectful. Like, I don't know. But don't do that. People were doing that. I'm like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing Are they would tag them? An explicit, like, thread fix or expli explicit fan art. And I'm like, bro, why the fuck are you doing that? Stop it. What is wrong with you? Don't do that. It's fandom for a reason. Leave them out of it. Jesus Christ. Now, fan art, that's that's fine. That's right. a whole, whole other thing. Rings of Power, bro, like, guaranteed. He was probably mad watching Rings of Power. It, it is like the peak of hubris that you think you are some random screenwriter. They announced the show? Your name isn't even in the motherfucking trailer. They don't even know who the fuck you are. Meanwhile, the dude that wrote a book is getting paid eight figures for this shit, and you think that you're gonna do it better than him. Well, why aren't they buying your book? That's the power of ego. Yeah, that's what it is. Zero, absolutely zero delineation from the standard is tolerable. It's not about any individual change that is necessarily as bothersome as the fact that it is happening on a much broader scale. If you don't scream now, you will have no mouth to scream later. Vandalism of art should not be tolerated, period. And it, it becomes so, so much worse than that. Once there is some sort of moral religion in regards to following a certain ideology to the point that you're able to act as a missionary of this ideology and enforce it down the throats of every person listening, even if it is at the cost of their art and their life that they've put into it, then who knows where it will stop. Okay. We've discussed a lot of the West. We've discussed a lot about our perspective and our lifestyle in regards to this artistic vandalism that's going on. But you may not be aware of how massive of an issue this actually is. It is a worldwide spreading issue because when you deface someone's heart, you dehumanize them. When all of a sudden your ideology is the most important thing and nothing else matters compared to spreading it, then who knows exactly how far that will go. Well. I can only give you a couple examples for something like this, but I think the most obvious one that basically proves that they will stop at nothing. Let me introduce you to pre-Elon Musk Twitter. I know, I know, crazy, toxic shit coming from Twitter, it's unheard of. Pre-Elon Musk Twitter in Japan had a very, very interesting trending page. It was constantly trending with lots of very important issues like toxic masculinity, like Me Too, like all sorts of different identity politics and okay. honestly very massively discussed topics that quite frankly should be discussed, I guess, according to my very personal random bias that shouldn't matter to anybody on the, on the planet at all. Twitter's Japan 
tw trending section was talking about every single social issue and discussion going on in the US of A, ladies and gentlemen. For a long time, people were questioning right. whether the actual trending page was a legitimate trending page that just decided on what was the most trending topic based on discussion in a given region, or if the trending page was somehow crafted, maybe, handcrafted by the corporate overlords trying to push certain food in front of you to consume. Or maybe they just only really care about the American market, so the trending page was just what's happening in the American market. This has been a theory, but completely unprovable in every single way until Elon Musk bought Twitter. He bought Twitter and he made a lot of really shitty changes, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. There are more bots on the platform than ever. You literally cannot open Twitter in public without seeing titties flying at your face. Mm. But with all the whack jobs and insane radical nutcases that Elon Musk has unleashed upon Twitter. Yeah, but like, I don't know how it's, how it is created or coded. You know? You get me? I don't know. Free speech is kind of free now, and the Japanese trending page is completely different than it once was. Ironically. After Twitter Japan's tweet, tweets got fired, political terms were gone from the trend, and there is only anime and entertainment stuff. Elon bought pe brought peace here literally, kind of proving that leftists are inciting war and are the source of the divide itself. None of that social topic discussion things touches the Japanese trending page. And it's purely talking about Japanese politics. Big shock, I know, that's crazy. As well as anime or manga or idol culture or other stuff that I'll never even begin to understand. But the point is, it does not look like it used to. It almost feels like the Japanese public was being artificially fed food that they did not want to eat. Guys, that kind of sounds like a propaganda war. Like. I don't, I don't want to get all, all Cold War spooked up or anything, but this sounds like the invasion of communism into America in the 1930s and 40s. Like, I am scared to see the lengths that this could go to and if this could even make irreparable damages and gaps between different countries and cultures. That's scary and it ain't bringing people together. So to answer my question just a few moments ago of how far will they go, I think they'll go as far as they can. And the minute you give them a finger, they will take a hand. Now they're changing a joke that calls okay. someone flat jested into calling them a tomboy, even though that's not a comparable thing at all and didn't make sense in context. Or maybe you'll have a cute girl from Dragon Maid saying how she hates the patriarchal society or something like that. All right, that's not really changing my life. But who knows how far this will go? Where will this end? And if we are accepting of things that are completely irrelevant, like the freaking Dragon Maid girl saying patriarchy, which is like a non-issue in, uh, in a vacuum, then- I guess my issue, right, is why take a work, a work, right? That was not made in your country. That was not made by people who you work with, whatever, I don't know. Why take a work such as Dragon Maid, bring it over and change it? Like, heavily like why why change it heavily like if you think it is good enough to bring over and to dub it and to localize it then you would think you think it's good enough in its original form that you just need to change it to english and change some things so it makes more sense and by makes more sense, I don't mean change lines unless the lines don't translate correctly because it's a joke that only works in Japanese. Like, that's just me, my opinion, I don't know. Well, are we opening the gates of hell upon us for some future where all art ends up vandalized and warped to form and follow the mainstay opinion of... I mean, we are currently seeing AI on the rise constantly and companies using AI. So, and then a bunch of people were stealing both um, fiction, even fan fiction, to feeding into like chat GBT. They were stealing a bunch of art that they liked to feed into these AI art bots. Like it's, uh, it's a problem a insane group of people that have a stranglehold on the industry. Now, unfortunately, uh, this is not where the Japanese segment of this video ends. Um, when I was on stream looking into the discotheque stuff and the lovely complex dub and stuff, I was hit by a really terrible, awful 
piece of news, and I am still shaking to my core. So I'm just going to play my actual reaction to uh, a very tragic event that happened in Japan very much on this topic. Roll the clip. Despite me seeing this largely as a positive incident, for both the attention it garnered and what it revealed to us, today I'm going to have to leave you on a more somber note than recent. Uh -oh. While out of the hands of all those uh -oh. involved at Discotech, the timing of this event could not have been worse. Uh... For those unfamiliar, Lovely Complex is a very famous entry in the shoujo genre, yeah. whereas just two weeks prior to this incident, another shoujo artist, Hinako Ashihara, took her own life. Oh, I don't bring this up God. simply to elicit what? an emotional response. The reasoning for her death ties directly into today's discussion. As right before her passing, Ashihara protested the TV adaption of her series Sexy Tanaka Song. A shoujo writer killed herself out of protest for a bastardized adaptation. And then a month later, Discotech comes here and bastardizes another shoujo adaptation? You've gotta be kidding me. That's, that's dystopian. What? Prior, she was promised by the producers that the series would be handled with care and with little change, but this didn't come to pass. She felt immense after finally agreeing to the adaption, she had two demands, be faithful to the manga or we'll make revisions. And since the manga isn't finished yet, the original ending of the drama, from the synopsis to the dialogues, will be provided by herself, the writer. Yes, she's aware that these demands may be disrespectful to the screenwriter and production staff, but NTV confirmed several times that they were fine with them, so everyone agreed to go ahead with the adaptation. What do you mean it's disrespectful to the screenwriter and production staff? If they make changes that you don't agree with, that's... That is disrespectful to you, the original creator. What do you mean? Ah! What do you mean? However, each episode she received was heavily modified from the manga. They simplified the plot and diluted all the strong personalities of the various characters, core elements, and important dialogues were drastically cut or completely missing. She's the author. It is your intellectual property. It is your characters. That is your child. That is your baby. And they're like... Cutting it up? Like, come on. No! Didn't, what do you mean it's disrespectful to the other people? It's disrespectful to you! Baby Dog Chickadee, it's disrespectful to you! Oh my god. Um, so there's the thing. Have you guys, um, do you guys know about Yotsuba? So Yotsuba is a, um, it's a manga. It's written by the same guy that did Azumanga Daio. Um, Apparently, again, not entirely sure, but apparently, the author of Azumanga Daio didn't like the adaptation, like the anime adaptation, and was basically like, you're, I'm not, we're not adapting Yotsuba. I will never let them adapt to Yotsuba because I don't think they can do it correctly. I don't think it will have the same heart. Like, you're never getting Yotsuba anime because they cannot do that. Like, they will destroy, they will ruin it. You're not getting it. And I'm, and it's just like, okay, this guy, I felt slightly, at least in the American market, Western market, whatever, got put on the map for his, for Azumanga Daioh, the anime, was like, you fucked up my story. You're not getting my other one. So, like, Yotsu was really good. And so, like, I can't even hate him on that. Like, if he was so upset about what they did, to Azumanga Daioh, like, or how they adapted or whatever. Yeah, if you have this other work and you're just like, this is, this work is really important to me, you're not touching it. I am not gonna let you try to adapt it because you fucked it up. Like, you will fuck it up, no. I can't even hate on that. Like, yeah, Yotsuba is the anime board of 4chan's, like, kind of, ma like, unofficial mascot, kind of, yeah. But, like, it's a really cute, like, for, like, YouTube is really cute. Like, it's a really cute manga. It's about a very young girl, and, like, uh, she lives with her dad. Um, and it's basically just about her life. Um, it, it's kind of like, it's not really for coma, I don't think. Maybe it is. It's been a minute. Um, but, like, it's, it's really cute. So I can't even help, like, hate on him for that. Because it's like, oh, I think a Yotsuba anime would be really cute. Especially because there's like a point in time where they like we kept seeing like really cute, like anime about like young children, right? And their interaction with the world, and like it's like oh, Yotsuba would do so well. But also he was like no, because 
I don't think you can adapt it faithfully or whatever. And I'm like, I can't even help him for that. This shit is a, an example. Because that's ridiculous. Frustration at the liberties taken with her own creation that she poured her heart into. With the note the police found after she passed, further compounding these reasons for why the event took place. Ken Akamatsu. Ken Akamatsu's in the chat. Okay, eventually Asahara would make a blog post since the leader expressing something about work, the process with working Nippon TV. She would later apologize for this post. Uh, accused of insulting the production staff at Nippon TV in her comment until she was reported missing on January 20th. A member of the House of Counselors and author of Love Hina had this to say on the incident. Something that shouldn't have happened, happened. In media mixed projects of manga and novels, this has been a frequent occurrence for a long time. Original developments and character changes that the original author did not want have oh become a problem. God, I think it's becoming less common. However, there's still- Fucking awesome- Awesome manga Dio in the background! A lack of thoroughness in terms of prior explanations. Or it was a second ago, I think. Hold on, I'm gonna go back. Yeah, Ken Akamatsu was a mangaka. Love Hina and, um, shit, like, uh, Negi? Magi, something. He did a lot of stuff. Um, uh, he did become a politician. Negima, there was. He became a politician, I think, to protect, uh, certain things in manga, I think. And I love you, love Hina and Negima. Yeah, so he did like a he did a bunch of like pretty big work at the time. Yeah, this is totally this totally looks like Azumanga Dai on the background. Hold on. I think it's becoming less common. However, there's still a lack of thoroughness in terms of prior explanations could be wrong. and contracts regarding secondary this use. Is awful. This is a problem for the original author, but the original author also needs a place. I know that was love Hina. To go for advice and knowledge in case they're not satisfied with the explanation beforehand or something happens later that is different from what was promised and though i don't wish to dismiss the fact that there was certainly more going on with ashihara that would lead her to commit such an act uh, yeah never mind uh the background was ken akamatsu work because it's ken akamatsu talking yeah obviously you're not gonna say that it was purely the the ad the adaptation's fault but it definitely contributed they butchered her piece of art she put her soul and love into it and the absolutely butchered it also seemed like she was on the fence about allowing the adaptation and then was like, okay, you can adapt it, but I have two rules that you have to follow. And they were like, yeah, yeah, no problem. We'll follow them. And then Amit just did not fucking follow them at all. So and after promising that they wouldn't, and she ended up doing the unthinkable. This is the same as the localization shit. What is even, what is even going on? So it still bad. shines a light on why I care so heavily about these things. This affects people. It's something these creators put their all into. Their heart, their soul, their dreams, and their ideas. Which makes it all the more ridiculous that Discotech's statement was not only a masterclass in gaslighting, but those in charge like Justin Savakis were actively mocking all those concerned on his social media. What? While Ashihara situation- He was? Next time an anti- I don't even know what that means. Crowd tries to insist that there's a wokeification conspiracy where us translators are injecting politics into stuff. I'm gonna point and say, nah, if we did, we'd get fired. Just like Jello Apocalypse. Oh my god, you gaslighting piece of shit. You've all been doing that. You've literally all been doing that. Anti localization, got it. You've all been doing that. Localization in the good old days changed Brock's rice balls to jelly filled donuts, okay? Which I think also is obviously bullshit and stupid, but. What are you doing? Like Justin Savakis, we're actively mocking all those concerned on his social media. While Ashihara's situation shows it's not just an issue that affects solely localization, it is certainly an issue. It's adaptation in general. If you're adapting a work, how can you do this? You're adapting a work that someone put their heart- I, I, I've said it again. I really feel like the only changes that should be made is, hey, this is a colloquialism um, that does not work here. It's either it does not make any sense or it- it is a joke that works in Japanese because of how the Japanese language works. It does not work in English. It's going to make no sense in English. We can make a slightly similar joke using different words that... So it's like, do we want the joke? Do we want a joke here or do we want the meaning here, right? So, like, we have to make that decision. But that should be it, right? That should be the only changes I personally think they should make if you're going to bring something over and localize it. Turn into English, change certain jokes or certain colloquialisms or whatever just because they do not work in the language you're changing it to. Um, and that's, that's like it. Like, personally, that's what I think. 
That is my personal opinion. Because it is someone else's art. It is someone else's work. And you're like, why are you changing it so much? Because again, if you think it was, it's good enough to bring over, then why are you changing it? You think the original content is good enough to bring over, then just bring it over. I sold it to. And your, your job was literally supposed to adapt it to another audience, either a live action audience or, or another language. That's your job. Your job isn't to pervert it. Uh, dude, I'm, uh, this is despicable. This is fucking awful. And it ended with this poor girl taking your life because of this. What are you doing? What is wrong with you? Art is someone's thought child. It's something that someone created. They put themselves in this art. Also, fucking, like, manga and anime, like, it takes over the creator's life. Like, it is, it is their blood, sweat, and tears, okay? They do not work in the best conditions. Um, so for just being like, hey, this is like, you know, my blood, sweat, and tears for the last five years or whatever. Like, I, like I wasn't able to take a break ever. This is like basically my child. This is this is my everything. And for just someone to come in and just do whatever the f bastardize it, do whatever the fuck they want. Is that not soul crushing? Like, is that not going to make you just, like, why? Why did I put in all of this? Like, are you, are you serious? I, this is insane to me. So back in the day, right, fan scanlations. That's how you get memes like the the all according to Keikaku. Keikaku means plan, right? Which is fine. It's I'm I'm mad that there's so many like fan translations out there that are probably more true to the original work than official localized translations. Like that's kind of fucked up to me. Like what are you what do you mean? To vandalize it is to deface them and to dehumanize them. And it's awful to see literal, actual manifestation of something so awful and tragic. And it hurts my heart every time I even think of that story. I couldn't bring myself to record it in myself again the second time, so forgive me for just showing the clip of me actually reacting to that news the first time I heard it, the full videos on Nuxanor. But in a world today where the artists get the short- Okay, for example, I like I mentioned either this video or last video, I read Don Me. Um Fucking Seven Seas Don Me apparently did not treat their scan leaders, their translators, whatever, sorry, their translators very well at all. There was this whole like union thing that happened where they unioned um up because of how terribly they were treated. Um all this other stuff. But if you read if you open those books they give you, there's like a glossary and they give you explanations how to correctly pronounce the names because they're in Chinese, different like meanings of different things. Like they won't necessarily translate certain names of objects because the name means something, but like, so they just explain what the meaning of the name is and like what significance it holds and stuff like that. You could do that. You can just have little notes that appear with the subtitles. Or like, and I know that's more work, but like, especially with manga, you could just have like, there, I remember reading manga where they just gave you like a little glossary at the end that explains something that you might not have known about. Like, maybe I'm just from a different time period. I, I don't know. But like, like, come on. Like, better than like, bastardizing the work someone put their blood, sweat, and tears into. Their whole soul, their entire sleep schedule. All of their stress. All of their hopes and their dreams and you're just destroying it because like you don't necessarily agree with something they said. Get the fuck out of here. Into the stick every single time and the psychos with the loudest voice on the internet are the ones that actually manage to walk away with the bag in success. That's not a world I want to live in, bro. No amount of culture matters to these people. No amount of personal personal pain and suffering inflicted matters to these people. From Henry Cavill walking away to The Witcher or George R.R. Martin, obviously traumatized by the fact that Game of Thrones 
up the last few seasons of their TV show because his books didn't finish. A lot of the actual artists end up becoming victims in these stories, but since the artist is not the one with the loudest voice, the artist is not regarded. They're paid into silence and threatened with harassment and threats for not being inclusive enough. And suddenly, you're left with a homogenized paste of absolute shit because the modern gaming industry is dog shit and it's garbage because no one's willing to take any risks and it's much safer just to go the route of paying Sweet Baby Ink to deform and... I really feel like, so we have, we are currently in a rise of indie stuff. Indie games are on the rise, indie animations are on the rise. And I'm like, is this why? Because everything's just been scrubbed so clean that it's just kind of samey and boring and just meh. Turn your shit into a homunculus. The fact that Netflix is so used to and so comfortable this entire concept of just changing shit for the sake of public acceptance and maybe good PR or something that they decided to change actual historical historical fact about Cleopatra when they released the Cleopatra show on Netflix is it goes to show how far the brain rot has gotten. Did you know that Cleopatra was so historically inaccurate based on them basically casting a whole bunch of different races for the people and the cast of Cleopatra that Egypt sued Netflix over it? But somehow the Egypt. lesson is never learned and evolution is never taken and progress is never made. Ultimately, I don't feel like this video is going to necessarily change anything on a grand scale, but the truth. But just being kind of aware of it is helpful. Like being like, hey, this is a thing that is happening. Be aware of it. Also, there's like this whole thing. We live in a capitalist society. You vote with your wallet. You vote by spending money. You vote by your views. You vote by watching things. Like it is it is a whole is a whole thing. So like me sitting here, like I'm not going to watch Velma because I've heard too much negative things about Velma. I really like Scooby-Doo. I am not gonna watch whatever the hell this is because I disagree with it. Like, I, it seems bad. I'm not gonna watch it. You know, I'm not gonna go see any new Marvel movies until I hear one is legitimately good and is maybe standalone or they just like nuke it and restart the DCU or whatever. I don't know. I'm not interested in this. So like, that's just something to be it's like making your like making yourself aware of, of things like this is kind of important, I think. The truth is, it doesn't have to. I need to change two people's minds with these videos, and they can change two more people's minds. Ultimately, we are at our strongest when we are together. Okay, we're living in a society where the "fix your art" meme is no longer a meme, but it is the discernible reality of modern art. An entire trade based on lies and facades where you never know what actual art is and what value actually exists in anything, where its natural beauty comes from, or what exactly was perverted and warped from the source. If you notice here and on Uxenor, I have been devoting lots of times to indie projects, trying my best to support as many of them as I can. I may or may not even be working on one myself. Who knows? It's pretty exciting. I want to live in a world where pieces of art are treated with the same integrity as Michelangelo's statue of David. And honestly, I hope together we can convince people that that's a world they should want to live in too. If you like this absurdly long deep dive, feel free to check out my Abominable Sins of Twitch deep dive going into the Abominable Sins on Twitch. I know, crazy. It's exactly like it sounds. Oh my God. I'm on Twitch. Consider subscribing for more sporadic, very, very complicated and long thought out topics instead of just the average slop. Daily Slop is on my second channel, Nuxanor. I post twice a day there. The vibes are immaculate, and remember to stay weird, fam. I don't, I don't mind the occasional long video, but like, yeah, that's just a. I'm upset about a lot of this. I'm gonna be honest. What are you guys' feelings? Because I'm just kind of upset about a lot of it. <laughs> crying yeah that's that's valid that is valid. i this video gave me a lot of feelings which you know is that not what media's like goal is to elicit a response